What's up everybody, welcome back to Built for Life. I'm Joel, and today we're gonna solve a problem. I have too many hats. So we're gonna take this little patch and some of these casings, we're gonna turn it into a hat rack. We're gonna get on Vetric, I'm gonna show you how I do it, and then we're gonna take some quarter inch MDF, we're gonna jump on the Shapeoko 5 Pro CNC, and we're going to see how this thing comes out. Stick around. Ugh. I really thought this was going to work out better. All right, guys. We're going to do this whole thing in Vetric. And as you might can tell, by that bottom corner timestamp, it is quite late because we are doing this after all this stuff has been done. But we're in the job setup. What we're working with today is a 48 inch by 24 inch by quarter inch thickness MDF. So there's that. Now, to create a rocker, first thing we're gonna do is start with a square. And it's gonna be 24 inches by six inches, and we're just gonna make it right there. Close that. Now, to make it into a rocker, the easiest thing to do is to come to node edit. Now, we want this to be the shape of a rocker. Well, obviously that's an arc, so I could come over here, wait till my cursor has that little squiggly line, which means indicates that we're working with the line. I get an arc. Oh, and it does this big giant arc, right? Let's undo that. And now let's do this. We're going to change it to a bezier. A bezier. I don't, I don't know how to say it. We're going to do that first though, right? Because now I can come back change it to an arc again and it doesn't do that big giant jump all right so we'll do the same thing down here let that squiggly line come up hit the shortcut b changes to a bezier and then come back hit the shortcut arc for a for arc and now we're going to hold shift select this one and this one now what we're gonna do is gonna hover over this top one and we're gonna drag it up to the correct arc that we want for our rocker. I'd say that's pretty good. I'm gonna get out of node edit. I think that looks pretty good. Pretty solid shape. I'll move it over here into the center so we can see it a little bit better. Now, for uh, for this rocker, there is a border that is black, a background that is green, and then the letters that are black. So to make that border, I'm just going to come over here. I'm going to click the offset, and we're going to go inwards, and we're going to do... three quarters of an inch offset. Perfect, three quarter inch offset, done. Now with that offset that we just created selected, I wanna do another offset because I wanna create uh, spacing for my lettering, right? Because I want my lettering to be at least a half inch away from my border. So I can select offset, can say an offset, select the interior boundary of that border and hit another offset. Now we're going to close that. Pretty easy. And now we're going to do our lettering. 
this is going to be basically block lettering, all capital. Looking at the spelling real quick, it looks pretty good. All right, now what you'll notice is that our letters are straight and our shape has that arc to it. And the way we get from this straight block letters to this shape here is with the distort function. All right. So with the words selected, we're going to hit that distort button and then we're going to select bounding box and apply. Now what this did is it basically created a bounding box around or the edges of our letters and it gave us four nodes. It gave us the four corners. So this is essentially node editing, but whatever node shape that you create, those letters will fit that. So we made this box here for our letters. So it's pretty easy. We're just going to drag our four corners to the four corners of that arc that we created. Move this in there. And you can see as I'm moving this stuff around, those letters change shape. And that is what uh, that's what the distort is designed to do. And now we can do the same thing that we did with this box, and we can turn it into a Bezier. Same thing with this one. And then we can go back up, change them both into arcs. Hold shift and select this one and this one. And this is the only place where I think it gets different. Uh, I'm going to choose to keep these letters the same size throughout this arc and select both of those. And you'll see as I go up and drag it to this arc that this bottom one doesn't fit. Um, and that's because this is going to keep the letters the same size and uh, if I drag it down, there will be a size difference in the letters. So this will, these letters will be smaller than these in the middle. So that will create kind of like a 3D effect that we're not really looking for. So pretty simple way to put your letters into an arc. We're going to close out of the stort. And then we're going to come in here and select this boundary arc that we created. And we're just going to get rid of that. And then that is going to be our sign, right? Well, the only problem with this part is we don't have any place for the hooks. So the next thing we got to do is create uh, an area down here for our hooks. So this is how we're going to do that. I'm going to select this largest boundary and then I'm going to offset it. I'm going to out outwards. Sure. Half inch works fine. Offset. Close. We're going to node edit it. All right. So now for some reason, it decided it wanted to throw these extra little nodes in here. We're going to delete those. Just like that. Now, we are going to select this node, hold shift, select this node. You know what? Oh, there we go. This is a mistake. Because we want more space here than a half inch. We want at least a three quarter of an inch. So I'm going to reset that and I'm going to go to my offset. I'm going to change that to 0.75 offset. That gives me the spacing that I want down here. I'm going to go back to my node edit and delete those nodes again with the shortcut letter D. 
I'm going to select this corner and this corner, and I'm going to drag them over basically to meet this line here because that's at three quarters of an inch in from this line. And we're going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to select this one and just move that. Select that. Hold shift, select that one, and then try to drag it square until it intersects that line. Okay, so this is kind of the shape we want to make. It's just there's some extra lines here. So I'm going to select this line. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to paste it. Now that one's selected, and I'm going to hold shift. I'm going to select this new boundary that we made, and then I'm going to move them off to the side. All right. Now what I want to do is I want to create a shape that follows this line here. And the easiest way to get rid of the extra lines is just with the scissors. Come here, cut this big one out. We don't need, oh. Got a little crazy there. We don't need that one. We don't need that one, and we don't need that one. And this is the shape that we're going for. All right, I can take this shape. Line it up with the border. And what that does is it gives us an area down here where we can put our hooks uh, for the hat rack. So I'm going to take this, uh, this shape and we're going to bring it up here. And now we're going to set uh, the holes for the 50 cow shells that are going to be the hooks. So the way I'm going to do that, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a or a, um, what do you call these things? Guideline. I'm going to set it at an even number. Uh, 45. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my shape to that guideline until it lines up perfect. All right, there you go. And what that allows me to do is drag more guidelines and uh, set the distance, right? So I can grab another guideline and go to 44.25. That means that's three quarters inch away from this one. And then I can go line another one up over here. And then I can calculate the distance between this one and this one, and that'll go straight to the center. And I can divide that and end up with my three quarter inch circles uh, evenly spaced. So here, 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 here. To do that, We'll go radius 0.75, and then we're going to join the center. One somewhere over here, one in the middle of that. I don't know how that just happened. Somewhere in the middle here. Here and then one in the middle over here. And then the easiest way to space these all out is to select this one, do an offset inwards, uh, let's say an eighth inch. You can take each circle and then you can make sure that they are on the line so that gives you an eighth inch boundary all 
all the way around the edge. This one is way up here. And this is not my final design. I've already made my final design. I'm just redoing <laughs> the Vetrix side of this at midnight uh, for the video. So, uh, in the final design, I spaced these out equally. So this one was this in between the these two. This one was dead center in between these two. And yeah, I get it. So then I can go back and I can delete this one. And I can select all of the all of these. Group them. this back over the top and you can see how it's all going to look so I'd say for a quick job that all ended up evenly so we're gonna have multiple shapes to cut out we'll have this shape here full shape with these holes cut out and then we're gonna end up with a border piece and then each one of these letters okay so we're out here working on the hat rack I tried to cut three. I um, ended up we're only gonna do two uh, because I had a little little mess up uh, on the CNC machine, and I'm gonna blame it on laziness. I wanted to double stick tape everything down so I didn't have to cut tabs off and stuff like that. So I was being I don't I don't want I guess lazy. Yeah, we'll call it lazy. Um, so I double stick taped everything, and I'm using trying out this new double stick tape. Um, yeah, new double stick, double sided woodworking tape, uh, from hippie crafter and the jury's still out on it. I'm not going to blame it hundred percent on that tape because as I, um, you know, pulled this stuff up, there were a lot of shavings actually underneath the tape. So I didn't really do a good job of cleaning off the, uh, waste board before I put the, the double before I put it down and double stick tape down so I think some of it was because there was some sawdust and chips and stuff underneath it uh, but I did manage to save um, two full signs so the letters and um, the backing and what I've done is I've used the Minwax Minwax sanding sealer and I have coated them very liberal. Well, first thing I did was I sanded, I cleaned everything up and sanded it all with a sanding block. And with MDF, especially this core wrench, I went straight to um, 220 to clean it all up. And it worked great. And now that I have used the sanding sealer, um, I'm gonna go back with a 320 or a 400 and smooth it all out. I've already kind of hit this one. Um, it's going to be slightly time consuming because of like this one um, getting inside this area here. It's going to be a little time consuming, um, but it's worth it to make uh, a nice looking product. And then um, this stuff here will just get charged to the game, I guess. Um, so only need one, making two, uh, hopefully with hopes that somebody will see the first one and be like, hey, can you make me one of those? And I'll be able to sell it. Um, but everything's coming out really nicely. I also saved the, the middle section that the letters were cut out of because what I'm going, going to do is when I go to put this thing together, I'll be able to use clean this up and use this and then slide drop this in here. And then I can set my letters in 
and it'll help me with my spacing, right? If I just, as I glue all these letters in, this uh, piece that it was actually cut out with, cut out of, is going to help me with my spacing and to get that correct arc. Uh, so I'm going to spend some time uh, sanding and uh, cleaning it up. And then next time I see you, hopefully we'll be uh, spraying some paint. Let's get it done. Okay. So this is my plan. Um, I've taken the shell, the, the 50 cal shells. I've cut them down or polished them, polished them up, and then cut them down. And I want to put the uh, rounds in as the hooks before I get everything together because if I mess something up um, now, then I won't have as much to take off later. So I definitely don't want to do these last. I want to go ahead and do these now uh, and get them done. My plan, as it stands right now, is to take uh, black. CA glue and uh, fill these holes, well, not necessarily fill them all the way up, but I have taped the back to seal them off and I want to put a decent layer of CA glue uh, in here and all up the sides and then stick the brass in and with the um, accelerator sprayed onto the brass and then I will insert it in and uh, use the table as the backing to stop everything uh, to keep it at the same level. Uh, that's the plan. We will see how it goes. We're gonna do this live. Okay, so first one. Trying to get the CA glue up the sides. And this is medium thickness CA glue. Um, now whether, whether or not it fills in the, the shell, that, I, that is the part I don't know. Like, so when I pull the tape off the back, is there gonna be a... Uh, solid well and that's what I was afraid of was pushing it out which is fine so I did it now I'll be able to uh, sand it off tape around the brass and then just repaint um, this is exactly what I was worried about so I didn't want to uh, have to do this um, with everything on it need somewhere for the air to go so the air is push is what's pushing everything out huh yep i don't know how to do that so all right if you're sitting there yelling at the video poke a hole on it let the air out it won't overflow like that well that's what i ended up doing on the second one uh but as I've speed this video up, I wanted to take this opportunity to talk to all those who, you know, uh, watched the video, liked, subscribed, commented. Uh, it has been awesome. I haven't been doing YouTube very long at all. This is my, I don't know, ninth, tenth video or so. Uh, so I'm still learning. And the response from everybody has been overwhelmingly positive. I really expected a lot of negativity coming in, into this. And there, you know, there has been some, but, you know, that's not that big of a deal. Uh, all the likes and comments have really just um, kind of given me that, given me the motivation to keep doing it and uh, try to make new content for you guys. I'm really enjoying it, and uh, yeah, hopefully we'll be able to do this for a long time. So, long, the long and short of the story is, thank you.
well, now we just get to do uh, more sanding. Great. I love sanding. It's my favorite thing. Uh, I really thought this was going to work out better. All right, guys. It's the fun time. It's uh, assembly. So the first thing I'm going to do is glue on this border. And I'm going to do it with uh, thick CA glue and accelerator. I'm going to put the CA glue on the back of here. Right down the middle. Just like that. And then I'll take my accelerator. And spray the border and then be very precise with where I drop this into place at. Came out good, a little more squeeze out than I hoped for, but it's clear, so it's not that bad. Just let that clear dry up for a second. All right, and then the next thing, provided that stuff is dry, because I don't want to glue this in. Next thing we're going to do is drop this template in this is basically the piece of wood that the letters got cut out of uh, and i'm reusing it and i'm just going to make sure the border is even all along and then tape it into place So that tape will hold that in place. The next thing I do is just uh, add some glue to the back of these each one of these letters, add some accelerator to the base, and then I'll be able to just set it in place and make sure I have a pretty even uh, eighth inch gap all the way around and go through all the letters. All right, it shouldn't take long. So far, using this uh, CA glue and accelerator, I haven't really had any problems with it, like reacting to pain or anything like that, which is, I mean, one thing that I think you would see, but because, I mean, it's a chemical, and I don't know if the paints, the chemical is going to eat the paint or not, but so far it's been pretty awesome. Don't have much negative to say about CA glue. Ever since I started using this stuff, it's been so awesome. It dries so fast, it really, uh, really feeds into my lack of patience because it just dries so fast. But with it drying that fast, and it really doesn't leave a lot of room for mistakes. The, uh, so I've already glued up the other one. And for some reason, I made 
the decision to use the black CA glue on that one. I guess because I had used it on the rounds and then the more I think thought about it, like even on the rounds, why in the world did I use black? Why didn't I just use clear? I don't know. I guess because it was in front of me. I have no idea. But live and learn, I guess. Well, guys, what do you think? I think it's going to hold my hats just fine. And that's going to do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, it don't cost you anything. Scroll down, hit that thumbs up button. If you want to see some more stuff like this, hit that subscribe button. I'm trying to do it every week, and there's lots more to come. So we'll catch you on the next one.